So welcome to another installment of Unraveling Religion. Uh, I'm your host, Joel Lessies, and I'm here with Dr. Abulayish, and uh, we are sitting in Toronto, the University of Toronto, and uh, I came for a conversation from Rochester with Dr. Abulayish, and um, we were just speaking before the show, and um, the thought arose to maybe offer an invocation for our conversation. W would you offer an invocation for our conversation? Of course. We need to start everything in the name of God and to be grateful to our Creator who brings people together, who gave us God who is the most generous, most merciful, and the most forgiver. I thank God all of the time. Every day I wake up to have a new day, a new opportunities to be surrounded with my children who are my life and they give me give me life. Thanks God, the giver, the supporter, the one who hears when others are deaf, the one who is watching us when others are blind. I thank God and I fear God and I count on God that He is close to us. The more we approach God, the more He approaches us. <laughs> so we need all of the time to remember and to think and to see God in our words, in our deeds, in our life. Well, thank you for that, Dr. Abulaj. Um, uh, so, uh, what brought me here actually today to see you uh, was, I think, a calling. It was a calling, an inner calling, like an intuitive calling to connect. And uh, I'm at once fascinated by the seemingly random nature of life itself in the physical plane, and yet underneath it I know that there's a tremendous harmony, a tremendous beauty, a, a tremendous perfection. And um, so when I, I had tried to attempt to connect with you prior, and I, I lost my way. I, I wasn't able to, to do it. And um, so today I'm very grateful um, for this opportunity. And um, I, I know that uh, your, your book, uh, I Shall Not Hate, uh, uh, comes from um, experiences which are uh, both painful and valuable in, in wisdom, I'm sure. Um, is there anything that you'd like to say about uh, your work these days? You know, these days, and the whole of my life, because as a human being, God created us, and we need to have a sense of purpose of our existence, and to ask, why are we here? What are we doing? And that we all were created from Adam and Eve and became nations and the tribes. For what? To know each other. Yeah. And when we speak about knowing, what do we mean by the word knowing? <laughs> it's not just to know the name, the face, the profession, the age, it's to show passion, mm -hmm. respect, understanding, and valuing the, hu the human being, and to work together to build, to construct, 
and to give hope and that we are one. So as a medical doctor, I value human life because a human being is the most holy creature by God. And the human life is the most precious thing in the universe. I know that there is a teaching that is shared in Islam and in Judaism, and that is whoever saves one life, it is as if they've saved the entire world. Yeah, of course, that's why all faith is Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. They came with messages to save humanity, yeah. to free humanity yeah. from slavery, yeah. from darkness to light. So we need to practice these values and to avoid manipulation and misuse of the religion for political reasons. You are so right. I could not agree more. So we need to give the right value and faith can bridge between people when they understand it and they practice it in the right way that it came to the prophets and to the messengers. Yeah. There, the messengers were only articulating an ethic that exists in the ethereal that was to be brought into this world, and that is shared in humankind. So there is no pro, there is no problems in the religions or faiths or with messengers. No. The problem is in the people themselves. It's in the in the political yes. leaders who yes. are trying to manipulate and to politicize the religion for political agenda. Right. So we need to avoid that or to be trapped in it yeah. as a Muslim. I can't be Muslim if I don't believe in Judaism and Christianity. Yes. When I mention Moses, I should say Moses, peace be upon him. Jesus, peace be upon him. Mary, peace be upon her. All of the prophets, yeah. all of the messengers, and that they came with the common unified a human and hopeful message to this world. Yeah. Well, the interesting thing that, that some people who may listen may not know is that Islam is a recognition of all the world's prophets, all the world's teachers, that Islam believes in all, all of them, all of them, and not, not Christianity and not Judaism do this. And even Islam it respects others religions and it says you have your own religion I have my own religion whatever you want to eat you can eat it yeah. whatever you want but the most important how do you treat me yeah. in life yes yes and I am not here as a Muslim or as a human being to judge people God will judge us that's all and yeah. God is the most merciful and patient <laughs> and patient and tolerant and kind and yeah. forgiver yeah we as a human being we don't forgive no. we are not mercy with each other yeah. we are not kind with each other yeah. so we need to practice these values God is the most generous and loving yeah. to we... all of people so we need to take part of these values and to practice them and that's the religion the religion is not about praying only it's about how you treat your human fellow so much more so dr abulayesh than the names that we call one another either good or bad is the actions that we imbue in this world the love that we bring into this world it is just it is the fact and if we wonder how we will be judged we will not be by anything other than the intentions and actions of our heart i believe that so that instead of blaming the religions we need to learn and to practice and to live our life by our faith is yeah that's what is needed but most of the time the people they don't or they judge without knowledge without knowing from ignorance we need to be aware of what do we do yeah. and if we have a good word to say it yeah. if we don't have that good word don't say the bad one <laughs> the bad one is very harmful it can be destructive it provokes anger, it provokes poison, it yeah. provokes hatred. 
and it divides. So we need to be selective and to be kind in selecting the right word. Yeah. In Islam, it says, O oh Muhammad, call people with wisdom, with kind words, with courageous mm. good deeds. Yeah. And if you were hard, hard hearted, yeah. no one will follow you. No. So we need to be lenient and kind yeah. with each other. Why wouldn't we be? Why wouldn't we be? Because yeah. of the ignorance. Yeah. This is number one. Yeah. Ignorance of ourselves and of others. Yeah. So first... And fear. We are fearful. But fear is used as a mean. Huh. Fear mongering is used these yes. days. And fear as a result of incitement, which is manipulated by many political leaders. Yeah. Fear, incitement leads to hatred, and this will lead to violence yeah. and divide. Yes. We need the people to reconcile. Yeah. Number one, if they want to reconcile, reconcile with God, yeah. with the Creator. Reconcile with yourself, yeah. to know yourself. Once you started this process of reconciliation with God and yourself, then it will be easy to reconcile with each other. So we need to be honest with ourselves. Yeah. We need to see the truth, the light. Yeah. Ignorance is darkness. And knowledge and education is the light. Yeah. The right education. Will you speak for a minute about da uh, Daughters for Life Foundation? Yeah, Daughters for Life Foundation is a foundation which I established in memory of my daughters, yes. Bisan, Mayar, Aya, and my niece, Noor. Yeah. Because after they were killed, when the Israeli tank shelled my house, some of them, they said to me, people will forget. But I ask, am I going to forget my daughter? They are part of me. Yeah. They live with me. Yeah. They move with me. And I am accountable only and just only to God and to my daughters. Yeah. What can I do and how can I take responsibility of transforming this tragedy into something positive, into something hopeful? to inspire the people because violence can't be dealt with violence. Hatred is not with hatred. Anger is not with anger. There is another alternative way. Yeah. It's wisdom. Yeah. It's education. And to spread hope. Kind words. Kind words. And that's what daughters for life to give a good example that we created life from death. And we gave hope from pain and suffering. And that's, it's in our hands. Nothing is impossible. God is there to give us and to support us and to move forward. So it's dedicated for education of girls and young women from the Middle East. May I say for a minute, Dr. Abalash, that I know this, that in the future, uh, redemption for all people will come through the feminine. It will come through women. It is not going to come through men. Men have been uh, uh, making choices, and, and rightfully so, in the context and the conditions, maybe. But in the future time, and may begin now, that I think the, uh, the, the, the evolution of humankind will come through the feminine. Of course, women are the main pillar of, of any community. Mm -hmm. Women who give life, yeah. they nurture life. I fully believe in women's role mm -hmm. and potential. But at the same time, as I said it before, we were created from Adam and Eve equal. Right. So we need to live as equal. This is true. And we are not competing with each other. No. 
We are complementing and supporting. Imagine this world without women or without men. Right. So we need to live and to work together jointly. Reciprocity. Yeah. That's what is important. And to give women the right means and the right opportunity to yeah. practice the role, I am confident they will make the world a better one. Yeah. Because achieving a healthy, safe, peaceful, stable, and sustainable, a free world yes. is the duty and function of women's education and role. In addition to that, the support of men. Mm -hmm. We need to overcome this discrimination yeah. Yeah. that we need to work together. Yeah. That's why Daughters for Life is there to support and to give hope and to spread a message of hope that tragedies are not the end of our life. I just came across a saying that said, says, uh, what, what some intend for evil, God uses for good. I don't think that there is any evil act from God. No. God always gives good things. Yep. But there are yep. things happening in our life and in our short-term judgment about these events, we think of it as bad. But later on we realize it meant to be by God for good. Yeah. You may dislike something and later on to realize it was for good. Yeah. And you may like something but later on to realize it wasn't good. Yeah. If I am traveling, plan to travel, and then the flight was canceled, I may feel upset. Why not to see that there is something positive in it? Not to go, not to travel, to spend time with my family, with my children, with my friends, or something wrong to happen to me there yeah. while flying the airplane to crash, we need to see the positive. Yeah. And that's always God. Yeah. May I ask you, Dr. Abulaj, you have transcended, um, you've just transcended uh, some situations, the loss of your three daughters and your niece, your wife, previously before not too long. When I was coming to understand your experiences, I wanted to know practically, what is your, is there a practice? How have you come to this place of like, understanding and transforming the suffering that you've seen and experienced into, is there a practice, is there, is there a meditation? Is there a prayer? Is it a combination? What helps me in my life? I am a person of faith. Yeah. Faith helps me a lot. Yeah. I fear God. Yeah. I count on God. And when there is anything to happen and I need, I direct my face to God. Yeah. Through prayer, yeah. through reading Quran. Yeah. And that's the most important in my life. Yeah. And I know that God will never leave us to collapse. And in life we are tested. But the most and the more difficult the test is, yeah. the more the reward will be. Yeah. How interesting. When we, yeah. when we tolerate and endure it with patience, yeah. patience is not a weakness. Mm -mm. It grows needs more courage yeah. Yeah. and the strength to be patient. So God is there, and 
the more you pass these tests, the more you are close to God. Yeah, the cultivation of gratitude in our yeah. heart for what we have. So often in, especially Western culture, especially in, in, in from where I come from, we so rarely see what we have. We're always looking for um, something else or what is not right before us. Like what is right before us is is a gift. It is a gift, yeah. It's a gift from God and by the end of the day, we are born, we live, and we have to live. Yeah. Each day is a preparation for the greater lifetime, too. Yeah? So, I want to meet God grateful to God for what He gave me yeah. and what He took from me. Yeah. Because even what He took from me, He kept it for me. For good cause and to save others' lives. Yeah. I mean, the impact of your, the impact, the, how everything happened that fateful day and your response. Who else yeah. he has created you for this reason and purpose? Yeah. That's why the second day of the tragedy of the killing of my daughters, yeah. it put an end to the war against innocent people and it saved others' lives. Untold numbers, untold numbers, yeah. And to give the human face to the people. Yeah. So everything, as I said, everything is for good. It is a strong, strong and way. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's life, you know, of course, it's the most painful to see someone to see his beloved daughters yeah. becoming bards, drowning in their blood, can't recognize them, but at that moment I directed my face to God and I said always, I asked and appealed to God, O oh God, O oh Lord, and I am sure He was there to support and to give me the strength, the patience, the wisdom to manage the situation. Yeah. I think that it's, as you said before, it is sheer ignorance and fallacy to think that any kind of uh, incursion, any kind of aggression, any kind of trying to tame a people through violence or aggression or coercion is wrong. It cannot be right. And it's only, it's myopic, and it is wrong morally and ethically and uh, in no uncertain terms, there is no such thing as, you know, they, they throw around in the term, they turn, they, all, all nations do this and people do this. It is, it is a, it is not, it is a, an element of our psychology which we need to work with. But, um, you know, in, when we use the term war, then it seems to justify certain kinds of behaviors which are never justifiable. There's no such thing as collateral. That is, um, that is a label used to make people feel better. And uh, in no uncertain terms, the, the, all the prophets that, that Islam and uh, Baha'i recognize say that it is only through patience and w wisdom and tolerance that people grow in love. Yeah. And that's when you speak about war. It's easy to have war. Huh. It's easy to declare it. But we need to think of the consequences of war, the long-lasting wounds, the human lives, the hatred, the anger, the divide it creates. War, so, there is no victory in war. There is, there is no All victory nor victory, anyone, with anyone. No, so there is another way. Yeah. War is the mean of the weak. Yeah. The small mind. The small mind. We need to overcome our arrogance, our ego. And that's what God gave us to be humble. Yeah. Humility humility. Humility. Wins. Yeah. Humility doesn't And win, to forgive yeah. Yeah. others. And to give hand to others. Of course. If someone to do something wrong to others, not to get revenge, we need to endure. Yeah. 
patiently and the reward will be much higher from God yeah. both in the other and in this world yeah. and that's what is needed to believe and to have the faith I agree with you I agree with you Dr. Ablash So, Dr. Abelash, um, where do you see, where do you see, let me ask you this, where would you like to see um, the relationship in the Middle East? Obviously, we want to we, we want to see it in a certain direction, and we've spoken about how that can be the case. I want to see the situation and the relationship in the Middle East, which is part of the world. Yeah. I want to see the relation between nations in our world yeah. as a human that we live in a small world yeah. and no one in our world is far from risk any harm in any part of the world it is just others will suffer as a result of what is happening because we see it we watch it or it approaches us for me The human family in this world, like the human being, yeah. the unit structure of the human being is the cell. Yeah. If one cell to suffer yeah. in the human body, the whole body will suffer. Yeah. So we need to work together and to see the, what we call the other yes. is not the other. No. It's about me. And we need all to be free, to be treated as a human, as equal a human beings. And that a human life is the most precious and the blessed gift from God. And I no one yeah, I agree. And no one should be killed in order to get his or her freedom. So the Middle East is part of the world, not to take it in isolation from what is happening in the right, world. Right. Or to blame the religion or the people there. We need to take responsibility. All. I agree with you And that's the yeah. biggest challenge in our world. Yeah. Is individual responsibility. Yeah. In particular, the politicians in our world. Yeah. They export their failures, their ego, they project, they project. To use yeah. the military means, yeah. which will never put an end. I want these political leaders to think thousands of times before saying a bad word yeah. or starting a war against other nations. Right. What legacy do they want to leave behind? And to zoom in, to think of the impact of these decisions. Yeah. So the Middle East, I see it's a future, it's a relation, it's part of the world's relation. Yeah. That no one in this world is safe, is free, is secure or healthy, or in peace, as long as others are not. So we need to work on the collective, yeah. human health, peace, security, yeah. and the freedom yeah. for all. Yeah. Internationalization yeah. of a freedom, socialization yes. of the human relationships, yeah. Yeah. harmonizations. Connecting as humans. We are humans. And connectedness between people. We are human beings. We Not to create the divide. So I, it, it baffles me that, I mean, I, I'm removed from um, the Middle East. I've been there uh, on a few, a few occasions. I do not understand why there is not 
infrastructure and schools and loans for micro businesses for individuals who I mean there are resources but the resources are not made available for the things that just make common sense for the good of all I don't understand I don't understand Dr. Abalash why that is not the case yeah, what do you mean by the Middle East well I mean uh, the West Bank and Gaza and portions of uh, Israel um, I think that there are I just think that there should be some like for instance when I was there I listened to I think uh, English radio and I it's not given mainstream uh, in mainstream Western but Hebron I think has a population of some 300,000 Palestinians Palestinian and maybe not even less than 10% are Jews. Yet Jews are dictating and setting policy. Am I correct in this or no? It's good. First of all, Middle East is the Middle East. Yeah. It's not Palestine or Israel. Yeah. The Middle East, more than 20 countries yeah. in the Middle East. Yeah. And the Middle East is connected to the world. Yeah. But what are you talking is about the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. In part, it, we could use it as a case study, a contextual case study. But for there are the many yeah. other cases. The situation between Palestinians and Israelis, what you said about the infrastructure and these, you refer to which place in this? Well, especially Gaza. Why? Did you ask why they don't have infrastructure? No, I mean, I can, have I asked why? I've tried to figure out in my mind why. I have not what do you asked think? why. I mean, I think it boils down to, uh, uh, you know, when we began the show, we said uh, we, we, are, we have great commonality, so much greater commonality, but individuals or people see difference. They see differences. People are fearful of differences, and politicians fear monger the differences into us and them. And so, I think as we begin to see the universal in one another, uh, and as political leaders begin to see the universal in each other, that uh, the potential that is never examined because of, of fear, uh, it has always been a certain kind of way, and to deviate from that way is uh, scary and problematic. Who knows what will happen? It can't be much worse than what has no, been. No, but what you said, you know, about the infrastructure, infrastructure yeah. why? Well, f first of all, I know that from the little that I know, uh, the, com the commodity of just water and hygiene and roads and schools... Uh, are vital needs. Are vi they're human, they're basic human rights. But why, why they don't have it? The resources are not provided by people who could provide the resources, whether that be, it doesn't matter who it is in a certain sense, I guess, in the context of this conversation, but I think that it, what needs to be provided, what must be provided for the security and comfort and stability of all is not provided. It just makes common sense. So I don't know uh, the day-to-day um, -day reasons why this isn't the case. What is the problem in the Middle East? What is the challenge? I'll answer you very honestly. What it's is the challenge now these days well, between I, Palestinians and Israelis? What is the problem? Well, I think I think I could. I mean, from my vantage point of what I understand, it is psychology. It is psychology. As a result of what? It is a result of the misuse or the the fanning of ignorance in individuals. Because if you come to Quran or you come to Torah, yes, what you bring to that is what you see. It's not that there's something wrong or evil in the text. What you bring to it is what you see. So if you see hate in that book, and it could be found in either book, or you could see great teachings of universality, mysticism, transcendence, transcendent of time, of uh, the, the esoteric, if you have that in you or you want to awaken that in you, you can find that in that book too. So really, to me, religion is about psychology. It's about the psychology of the individual changing the collective. Uh, religion is about the 
the day-to-day -day life. Yeah. It's not about psychology also. It's about the behavior, about right. the context, about the lifestyle, about the vital needs, about, about religion, how you practice it, how you reflect, how you understand it. Religion is very helpful and very positive. Oh, but yeah. sometimes the psychology, we play with it and yeah. it creates fear-mongering. Yeah. And that fear-mongering is psychology. Yeah. Not, but the facts on the ground are man-made. I agree with you. Let me clarify when I say psychology. I mean the determinant of determination of like priority, of like what we value, how we act, what we act on, is it is in a sense the the, the, the birthplace of it is a is a is a kind of like it's a spark of like what is divine in us that gets into the psyche and psychology and transmuted and understood. So if we I, I believe that if we, we could alter or change or open our psychology to, um, you know, we spoke of like the diminishment of the ego. Yes. If we could begin to do that, then we begin to see the divine in one another. So, for example, the Palestinians and the Israelis, yeah. were they were born equal or not? No. Why? Well, they, uh, fr from, from which, God, from the moment they were born. They were born of course from, they are. And they were born no, yeah. e equal. Yeah. And they have to run a normal, a free, equal life. Yeah. What happens later after they are born? They are socialized. Are what socialized. what creates the gap between them? Is there any gap between them? There's tremendous gap. There is. In what way? So I'm so glad you asked. Uh, socialization, resources, culture, influences, uh, lineage, parents, teachers. Um, but the basic infrastructure, the environment in which we surround ourselves in, influences how we perceive and what we think. Any human being put in any either difficult or what we call beneficial environment will respond to that environment. It's only so it's the environment which shapes the environment which shapes and the context of life in which we live shapes our behaviors. Yes, of course. So, uh, but not not. Mostly, but not totally, because there are elements. Yeah, of, of course, there are other yeah, elements. I yeah. know that, but it's important the environment in which someone to live, and someone who is suffering on daily basis, yeah. deprived yeah. of a freedom. What do you expect from him or her? My God, if people will meet what you expect from them. So if you expect... So don't of, expect from someone who is screaming from labor pain to be silent. Exactly. Even I agree with you. <laughs> a woman in labor pain who is screaming and then to say that because she is screaming, she is violent, yeah. she is shouting. I agree with you. I think I am the one who is violent and uh, don't have any sense of a humanity to understand that woman which is important so the situation in the middle east where the palestinians and the israelis they are living there and of course palestinians and israelis are not equal they right from, from right. one is powerful there's one a power is differential weak. There's a power one is occupier, yep. one is occupied. Yes, this is true. One is oppressor and the other are oppressed, but both at the same time they are occupied. The Israelis are occupied with their fears, with their ego, with their narrative. Yep. And the Palestinians are occupied on daily basis on the ground by the Israeli defense forces, the land and yep. everything. Yep. So how can we help them to be free, to equalize between them? This is the most important thing. You can't solve any problem without equalization and fixing this problem. You must acknowledge it, it is there first. You must yes. acknowledge it is there first. Of course, that's the truth. And then you move forward that's right. to treat with the issue of reconciliation or what I call it rehabilitation, yep. to rehabilitate yep. the relationship. So the Palestinian suffering should be understood. It's not isolated and separate from the Israelis. To understand it and to take it that the Palestinian suffering is from the Israeli suffering. The Palestinians' freedom is from the Israeli freedom. It disempowers the Palestinians in a sense, correct? I mean, is this what you're saying or no? No, that's the only way. The Israelis 
a freedom is from the Palestinians a freedom but if the Israelis to think in isolation from what is happening with their neighbors it's not going to help in the Torah it says we were strangers in a strange land how do we treat the widow the orphan and the stranger even in Islam it says it recommends to take care of whom of your neighbor yeah. the closest neighbor and they say to many Israeli friends your closest neighbor who are the Palestinians are much better to you than your father brother yeah. who is in other places and you need also from the international community to help the enablers to be fair mediators for the benefit of both not to be biased with one side or the other I say it we need to embrace and to push embrace for the good things and push against the bad things from anyone because yeah. no one is angel no one is a prophet in this world we That's are a human correct. being we make mistakes but not we are beings who choose and speak we are beings who choose and speak and uh, support your brother or your sister if he was oppressor or oppressed they to tell the truth to tell the truth the oppressor yes and to raise the hand of the oppressed excellent that's what is needed yeah. so we need to understand it life can't be continued in this way the only way to admit to acknowledge and to see the other a human face yeah. that he is not different from me it takes and more, to, to it be take, tolerant yeah. with others tolerant in being curious to know who is the other what we call the other to interact to integrate not to be isolated right. I am here in Canada I have to integrate yeah. from by by my choice I yeah. came to integrate here as a Zeldin as a Canadian as a human yeah. not to be isolated or I am much better than other groups I am equal to other groups and I am similar to other groups and this diversity and the differences are not for bad it but they are okay. for good it is for good of course and and what you say is all because we spoke about humility right why is why is humility such a profound teaching it is truth it is seeing things truthfully if we do not see things truthfully then we cannot work or change anything so to say that like humility is important isn't really the point the point is like what is true what is truth what is truth you know it's true no one knows the truth as the people themselves yeah ask your heart ask your soul yeah. inside when we make mistakes yeah. we feel it we know we it know. we know it maybe because of the fear we don't admit it yeah so ask your heart ask your soul look inside and we can see and seek the truth yeah. so truth as Jesus said seek the truth and the truth frees you yeah. you can be free with the truth so the truth is there and if we don't find it we need to seek it yeah. to find the evidence to find the signals for the truth I agree with you wholeheartedly because for me I see it the truth is about the true diagnosis the right diagnosis right. because once we have the right diagnosis we can set up the right treatment yeah and then recovery and healing is possible yeah, yeah of course yeah, yeah. but if we don't know the diagnosis we don't know the disease yeah. then the patient will suffer the doctor will continue to waste and to work hard till we find the truth I mean in a sense it's only Allah that uh, heals we just find the diagnosis and we put in place the treatment Allah but, does everything else but yeah? Allah is there to guide us yeah 
as I said, the more we seek the truth, God will show us the truth. And the truth that we are human, we are equal, and we are created not to torture, to oppress, to occupy no. each other, no. but to collaborate, yeah. to work together, yeah. to help each other, yeah. and to give hand. Yeah. Together as brothers going from strength yeah. to strength. Brotherhood, family. Yeah, that's true. Dr. Abu Lash, I'm so appreciative of your time. Um, I don't want to take too much of it. Are you are you feeling like you'd like to say anything else or? Uh, thank you so so much. I can say all of the time the people that there is hope in this world. Yeah. Don't lose hope in God's mercy. Yeah. Don't be in despair. God's mercy is great. And don't blame others. Don't wait for others to take action. Start by yourself. God will never change what is in people till we start to change what is inside ourselves. I encourage the people to look around, to look inside, to ask. Not to to be, learn. To not to be afraid to explore. To learn. Yeah. To interact. Yeah. To avoid these. And to smash them, these psychological, mental yeah. Yeah. barriers yeah. which were created there between us. They are artificial yeah. barriers. And it's easy to smash them. We need to start to know each other. The more we approach each other, the more we know each other, the easier to solve the challenges and we will find a way to solve our world's problems and to make the world a better, a human, yeah. a human one. There is no choice here, Dr. Abelayesh. There's no choice. There's just one direction. It must be that. This is There's the no, only way. It is the only way. It is the only way. Because I say, if either we sink together or we live together, it cannot be another we way. We live and ride one boat. Yeah. And we must work together to protect it. Yep. This is one. Boat. Without a bridge with us. Yep. Without. thinking of ourselves to think as a collective. Right. Well, in, in working, to begin with, to work with those, to work with our prejudice, to open, to like see, yes, I have this in me. What can I do about it? How do I make it better? How do I eliminate and dissolve it so that I see a human being before me? Start with a small act. Do something. Yeah. Something kind. Yeah. yeah. Visit a patient at the hospital. Yeah. Give hand to someone. Give a smile. Yes. Say a nice word to someone. Yeah. Be nice with your parents, yeah. with your neighbors. Start with your own community. I'd like to close with a Rumi poem that I was hoping uh, to include here. And uh, it's, the translation is Coleman Barks. And uh, it's my favorite Rumi poem. In uh, the essential Rumi, it's on page 32. You may know it. It's, uh, I don't know, it's, uh, I think it's entitled uh, Only Breath, but I'm not sure that I have it here. You know what, I'm going to switch gears. I'm actually going to, I'm not going to go roomy because uh, the, uh, the Wi-Fi is not working. So I'd like to close with this poem from a Native American poet. Her name is Joy Harjo, and she's a musician. She's a playwright. She's a poet. 
and it's called Eagle Poem. Eagle Poem. It goes like this, Dr. Abelage. To pray you open your whole self to sky, to earth, to sun, to moon, to one whole voice that is you, and know that there is more that you can't see, can't hear, can't know, except in moments steadily growing, and in languages that aren't always sound, but other circles of motion. Like eagle that Sunday morning over Salt River, circled in blue sky and wind, swept our hearts clean with sacred wings. We see you, see ourselves, and know that we must take the utmost care and kindness in all things. Breathe in knowing we are made of all this, and breathe knowing we are truly blessed because we were born and die soon within a true circle of motion. Like eagle that rounding out the morning inside us, we pray that it be done in beauty, in beauty. Dr. Abelage, thank you so much for today. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Thank you so much.